Got it. And thank you, Rachel, for that reminder. You're most welcome. My pleasure. Ask, ask if you can see. Can you see us now? Yes. Can, can you see the PowerPoint? We can see you, we can see your PowerPoint, and we can see the sign on the wall behind you. So you are all good to go. Okay, I'm looking in the camera, but I don't see me. But that's okay. That's all right. We're talking about a subject that is dear to my heart. Teaching children to pray. Um, it started with me. We used to have a, a prayer summit for children. And um, I would notice that when the children would come up for the children's uh, story, and we would ask them to pray, they basically say the same thing, even although from primary, juniors, are on up. And so I was saying, Lord, we need to get them to have a closer connection to you. So that's why teaching children to pray is so important to me. Um, go to the first one. I want you to look at this, the Lord's Prayer. I want you to take time and everybody say it to themselves, the Lord's Prayer. Just Okay, did everybody read it? Did everybody read the Lord's Prayer? Yes. Okay, yes. when you read it, um, did your mind stay on the Lord's Prayer? Did it wonder? Uh, did it have any meaning to you? Go ahead to the next one. And the reason why I ask that is that sometimes we say a prayer and after a while it loses its meaning. And the Lord's Prayer is very important because the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray. And so when you look back at the Lord's Prayer, it has a lot of this packed in it. It tells us about our daily bread. It tells us to help us through temptation. It has so many things. When does your mind check out or wonder when you're reciting the Lord Prayer? Does reciting the Lord Prayer focus your attention or lose your attention? How many times do you say the Lord's Prayer in a week, a month, or a day? Why do you recite the Lord's Prayer? Are you doing it because it's something that you want to do every day? Or is it something that's uh, really precious to you? Or we all have our reasons why we say the Lord's Prayer. One of my examples is I want God to be with me each day. And I actually want him to give us our daily bread because I don't know all the things that I want for myself. And what I might ask the Lord for might not be what I need that day. So I'm asking him to be with me and to guide me. So it has different meanings for different, for different ones. And the same thing with our children, the Lord's prayer and certain prayers that we say all the time have different meanings for them also. Let's look at the nature of prayer. Let's look at some things about the nature of prayer. Prayer is talking to God. Excuse me, Miss Caroline, before you go on, uh, looking at what you said, 
Are we going to consider also the life of the prayer? Because looking at the Lord's prayer is pretty lengthy for five, for five years old. So can we find a way to break it down into some kind of way for the little people so they can grasp? They don't have to say the whole of prayer in one, thought, in one thing. Well, you're right. I'm coming to that. I'm coming okay. to that, uh, the age appropriate. Thank you for bringing that up, uh, okay. Rachel. I really appreciate that. But I'm coming to that. Um, when I, as soon as I finish this part, you'll see where I'm going. Um, there are many languages. There's reason for not praying. And what makes prayer difficult for children is one of the things you just said so long, so lengthy for special ages. We have to know age appropriate prayers. We have to know the reasons why sometimes um, how to get a message. Some of them want to know how to get a message to God. Does he really answer? There are so many unseen voices of God and there's many ways to hear God. And so the main thing to answer her question is it's got to be age appropriate. And we're going to get to that in a minute. Go ahead. Learning to pray right there. Number one, age development. Lord, she just to pray as John also taught his disciple in Luke. It's also like writing a letter to God. You're building blocks or Legos, or it's like when you're praying each day, you're adding on to that prayer. Sometimes it's not the same prayer. Um, um, it's not the same prayer. It's different ways, but it's different things that you wanna to talk to him. Some things to help you learn a prayer could be a, just a sentence, or it could be a, a, just, something like a picture. I don't know if you can see my uh, example or not. I'm holding up a pillow. Can you see it? I don't know if you can see uh, my example that I'm showing. Yeah, we can see it. Okay, good. It could be something that will trigger their little minds. This is for a younger person. They know that when you hold up this, it's time to have prayer. They know when you sit at the table before you eat, it's time to have prayer. They know when you get ready um, to get in a car before you start your car. Some children know it's time to pray. And I've had them to stop me and say, Mima, we didn't have prayer this morning. <laughs> we didn't have prayer before you started. <laughs> so there are signals and things that as you teach them to pray, they will start learning more. It's time to talk to God. Uh, the beginners, let's try the first age, young person. I would start with them with a very few words. Um, uh, someone might want to give an example of a small sentence that we would say for beginners. Anyone? Uh, one thing is for beginners, you can use, uh, you don't have to use word, you can use song, like uh, Brenda Walsh in his program, when it's time to pray, I close, let them prepare for that first before. Right, I like that, I like that. You can use a song, you can start them out with a song, something really simple. You can have, um, you can have a, a particular item or something that you hold up and they know it's time for prayer. But you have to, now the hands. I don't know if you've ever seen the hand prayer or not. I'm gonna show you an example of that. We have some little uh, fingers here. And when I hold them up for the children and I give each one of them one, they know it's time to pray. Can, can y'all see that? Can you see it? I'm holding it up yeah. to the camera. Yes. Okay. Um, I would when they see me using this, they know this might be for uh, mom and dad. 
this might be for the uh, the preacher, the preacher. This might mean for the family. This I can pray for um, maybe a friend, and this is for myself. So when they see this, they'll start knowing it's time to pray. I use different things, pictures for younger ages. Um, they listen to God in silence. And that's one of the things that we forget and we start very, very early. Getting them to listen to God as well as learning to pray. Be still and know that I am God. Psalms 46.10. A lot of times when we teach our children to pray, we forget it is talking to God, but it's also listening. What do you hear? What did God say to you? We need to ask these questions to them. What did God tell you when you prayed today? Did you hear God with a message? No, I didn't hear mommy. I didn't hear God say anything today. Well, when we pray, let's ask God to give us a message, something he wants to tell us. Those are things that we can instill. Okay, the next one. A kindergarten age. What is a, some of the things we can do for the kindergartners? We can basically do some of the same things that we just did, but we're gonna give them more opportunity to pray. We're going to ask them um, if they want to do a certain prayer or if they would like to say one word to God or one sentence to God. And you can do that through so many ways. I have, I have something here. This is called, can you see these? Or can you see these are little jelly beans? Sometimes I hold up different objects and they know that it's, it's different things that they're gonna to talk to God about. Can, can everybody see this? It's called a jelly bean. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The first one is uh, the red is for the blood. Green is for the grass that God made. The yellow is for the sun, so bright. And then the other uh, orange is for the edge of night, before just before the sunset. And the black is for the sins that we have. Each one of us have different sins in our lives. And we want to ask God to forgive us. And the um, white is for the grace he gave us. And pink is for our new tomorrow. So there's different ways and different things you can do. A lot of times we find ourselves in a rut and we say the same prayer. Or we're doing the praying. We need to ask the kids what they like to share what God has given them. Not necessarily, will you pray for us today, Mary? Mary, what has God told you this week? Or what would you like to ask God I talk to God about. And those are different ways to encourage them to pray. And it's not putting them on a spot. Because you know, God talk, they want to, they want God to talk to them. So they want to share what God has said. Okay, the next thing. And for our primaries, this is the age that they're ready to make their prayer requests. Some kids uh, when they're younger, they don't necessarily ask God for certain things. But when they get to the age of primary, parents and teachers, this is the age that most young kids, when they're going to start leaving and lose interest in God, this is the age. This right here. And it's because we're doing the same thing each level of serving God should go a little higher, a little, uh, it seems like a little bit more. We do a little bit more, we learn a little bit more. And when we get to this age, 
we stop asking them things. We need to start asking them, how was things this week? What kind of prayer would you like to pray today? And then you start naming the different prayers. There's the popcorn prayers. There's the um, um, bubble prayers. There's all kinds, there's the hand prayers. Maybe you name about four or five and let them pick. This way they're starting to show interest and you're finding out what they're thinking about. You're finding out um, how they feel towards God. Because if we never ask them, they will never tell us how they feel towards God. Don't always be a person that want to tell them, find out what they're thinking also, and which will help you plan how to teach them. Okay, the next thing. The juniors. This is when you start memorizing more, longer scriptures, longer texts. Prayers are more personal for them. And then the, um, the ABC of prayer. When, when my granddaughter was uh, doing my PowerPoint, she remembered when she was in school, the ABC of prayer. And I asked her, I said, Alex, what is the ABC of prayer? And she said, it. she said, ask, believe, and claim. And she remembered that even from when she was pri uh, primary, junior age, younger age. So um, you want to find out exactly what they're learning and what they want, what will help them. And one of the things that's going to be in your handout that we haven't, we're not going to go over on here on the screen, um, is helping children to pray and worship. Teach prayer as a conversation. You want to model it. You want to help them overcome their shyness because do you know if you find a shy child in a, a in um, children's church or Sabbath school, they're kind of shy about talking to God too. So you want to start them to come out of their shell and they'll easily come out of their shell for God and maybe not us. But if they know he will keep what they say and he will only share it with them, uh, they're more willing to uh, talk to him and that God listens to all prayers. That was, that's a, I had a little boy that was so surprising to him. God hears all prayers? And I said, yes, God hears all of our prayers and all prayers. Um, God may answer. Excuse me, Sister Lamb, uh, before you go further, one thing about this age, junior and early teen, and then primaries is uh, initiate them to the prayer journal. Yes. Make it more relevant for them and take more meaningful or uh, make it real. Prayer life. Initiate them to a more prayer life by um studying them into a prayer journal. That's oh, it. you're right on it. You're right on it, Rachel. You're right on it. Thank you so much. Those are some of the things I'm gonna show you before we end some of the different journals and things. Do you have that little silver one that was in there? Okay. I'm going to show you some things in a few minutes, a whole bunch of different things that we can use in the different ages. And I did have a prayer journal, Rachel. I want you to see it in a few minutes. Um, okay, go to the next one. There are some prayer activities for children. And there it is at the very top. <laughs> there it is, prayer journals. Uh, praise collection, collages, praying in color. Let me show you what that is. Um, that is very interesting. And they have them at all ages in the store. This is a journal here on memory verse, my first memory verse coloring book. But it's coloring, it's doing verses. And it's also helping them to uh, to learn their, you know, to do their colors and also like a praying in colors. Um, 
and we have uh, the different crams and different little things for them that you can use. There's pens, there's paints, there's markers, there's all kinds of things that pray in colors. Um, and it, and I think if you go online, there is called Praying in Colors, and there's a website. It's all kind of things you can do in Praying in Colors. Um, there's a prayer jar. There's uh, the bubble prayers. It's uh, The kids used to love that, especially the younger ones. I would blow a bubble, and they, as long as they saw a bubble, they would say a, say a prayer thank you for this or something the ones would say it into the, all the bubbles and then they really like this one i have a girlfriend that has all the um die cuts and so she made this for me can you see this is a uh popcorn sometimes i use real popcorn and if they you know say a verse real quick and I don't have to call them that's called a popcorn prayer when I ask for prayer someone will just start praying and we call that the popcorn prayers and sometimes the smaller kids I'll laminate these and hand them out and they know we're going to do a popcorn prayer so everybody will be able to whisper prayer this way I'm getting everybody the shy kid the kids is always talking out loud, the one that seems to be real busy. I'm involving everybody when I use the popcorn prayer. And that's one of the things when you're having your Sabbath school, don't just stick to one kind of prayer. Don't just say, okay, we're going to open up with prayer and just pray. Do the different kind of prayers so they can learn about them. Uh, there's one I have here. There's a whole list. There's a calendar, a prayer calendar. There's a um, community prayer box. They can get the prayers of their friends in their neighborhood and in school and ask them in school, is there anything you would like for my family to pray about? And sometimes it'll get people to thinking. And one lady uh, in a classroom in Georgia, she was a, she's a teacher and um, she had a prayer wall up and this parent came and saw her mom's name on the prayer wall. And she said, that's my mom name up there. And she said, oh yeah, we're praying for your mom to get better. We heard that she was sick. She was so impressed that the whole class was praying for her mom her daughter had told them about her, her grandmother being sick. And so that was so interesting to her. So um, you making prayers more visible to them and they're taking a part in praying and it makes it easier for them to pray. I have something here. I don't know if you can see this. It's, uh, these are chains. I keep scrap paper whenever, when I'm in school and we have extra paper and stuff left over from when they're making things and coloring and so forth, I cut them up into strips. And then I'll give each child one and they'll put a prayer request on it. Or they'll put something they want me to write. We'll, if they can't write it themselves, we'll have helpers to write down their request. And we'll make a chain and we'll uh, staple the chain together and we'll just make it around and we'll answer it. When the prayer is answered, then we will break the chain and then we'll keep on until the rest of the prayers are answered. There's so many things that you can do. It makes prayer interesting to the children. It's not me saying one thing all the time. There's so many ways. And then when we get through with that one, we have had something where we had I'll share that with you in the end. Some of the we've had at our prayer summit, we had a whole room of different ways that you can pray. And the kids were amazed at some of the things we did. So I'll mention those in a few minutes. Um, go to the next one. 
Oh, okay. That was kind of the end of some of the things that we have on there. But let me share what we did. Another um, very interesting one is prayer walk. When they're in yeah. the playground or when you yes. go out, outing, you know, and we find things in nature that relate to them, to the a specific need. Water, wax, snake, how can that be uh, related to them? Prayer work is a very important thing. Especially the neighborhood. And fun. Yes, yes. It's nice when they're walking and uh, they go by a mailbox and they pray for their neighbors. That is awesome. When they're on the way to school, because you, you have some children that walk to school. Mm -hmm. When they walk to school within that block, they want to pray mm -hmm. for the people in that block, the next block, mm -hmm. and so forth. For and the, the community. And the community, the different ones. So there's so many things that you can do with prayer. We have, have you ever heard of the Band-Aid prayer? The Band-Aid prayer. The Band-Aid prayer we took and anybody that's sick in the family. Now, if you catch a child that won't say anything, they will tell you if there's somebody that's sick and they got a chance to write that name on there and you put that on the wall. And then when that person uh, was well, or they get out the hospital, you take that down. It's that's one way. Then we had one called the um, the uh, smash. We took some play play doh, and and this is good. But sometimes you find a kid that seems to be angry about things, and it seems like they have a hard time with different situations. And we call we say we have a smash table. Anytime you feel frustration, take you a, 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 if you have the little small Play-Doh and they can go to the Play-Doh and take it and just kind of press it down and say a little prayer. And you'd be surprised at how it relieves their frustration. They have a way of asking God to help me. I, I, I'm frustrated today. I don't know why things are not going right and so forth and so they have a means a way of talking to God and being able to say it to him and and pray so there's so many different things that you can do to be able to help our children to learn to pray um is there anybody with any questions I don't want to mention and take up all the time. There might be some experiences that y'all have found that have worked for you in teaching children how to pray. Would anybody like to share? Okay, have you ever heard of the pretzel, the pretzel prayer? And you take a pretzel and, um, and you hold up the pretzel and the kids are able to say a prayer. And then at the end, they're able to take a bite of their pretzel. So um, we have little things like that. It's all kind of ways that we can do to help our children to learn how to, to pray. Rachel, what other, oh, somebody else. I saw somebody, Judy, Judy, go ahead. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, just two things. The one, um, right now I teach the primary class and it's very important to ask for prayer requests and stuff, but we have to be careful too because children, we need to protect the privacy of the families because children can reveal sometimes too much information depending on how we question and how we keep pushing. So some right. things, if you notice that they are going into very personal, you can redirect and then maybe take it outside the class because you just have to remember there are other children listening to these requests and you have to make a judgment as the teacher as to what is appropriate for everybody and what would not be appropriate. If, for example, I'm a mom, there are some things I wouldn't want my child to take out there. 
to the world. So that's one, but then one way that works for us, especially is to teach them to be specific, because sometimes they say, oh, help the children of the world, help the families, blessed kids. So I ask them, how? How do you want God to bless them? So that otherwise then it becomes just boring, the same repetition, or oh, bless them, bless them every day, help them, help them. So I, I try to challenge them and ask how, be specific, name one thing that you would like a God to help the children of the world with. Oh, I love that. I love that, Julie. Thank you so much. Um, when you asked, the, when you were telling about the um, uh, being Pacific, I wanted to comment on that. Uh, when you said uh, we should be Pacific, sometimes they can write at this age, and I like the idea of them writing down their prayer requests. That way you can kind of hold back them revealing too much and that way you can pick out some things or before you display it call that child to the side and say do you want me to put this or do you want to say it another way so we know how to pray so that's a good um, observation that you said because you don't want them to say things privately and they don't know that they're telling their business they they want to share they need help uh so uh i would suggest you have them to write was there something else too judy did you ask a question oh that's it thank you so much okay thank you and thank you for giving I, us that I have information a, yeah I, I don't think you could present that all the time because sometimes they take you by surprise and they start praying and then things that is happening to their home. And, um, you know, like you said, they start praying about it. Um, um, Sometimes right in the middle of, of, of church, I mean, of uh, worship service. You, you know, um, I, I don't know how to, um, to uh, prepare them. Not, I mean, or oh, uh, should we ask them not to pray for those things? Should we... Uh, how? You cannot, that, so that you can't stop them. One Sorry. of the boys in the church, right in the middle of service, they are so volunteer prayer, and then he start praying for, I can, you know, for mom and dad to stop fighting this morning before they came to church. Oh, so how do we stop, you know? So you cannot stop it, but if it happens, then you cannot ignore it either. You, can, you have to find a way to address it. Because right. uh, it's happened to me too. That's why I raised it. Because it's the same thing. One child, I didn't know they were having issues. And he's like, so can you ask? I asked them, what is it that you want us to pray for? He said, can you pray for my dad to stop beating on my mom? And I said, oh my goodness, because that was too much information. So I had to say, you know what? I'll talk to you after this. But let me tell you, children, sometimes it happens. And I had to share my personal experience. So I, it became a learning um, experience because I could see the child was very traumatized and sad about it. So you, you cannot stop it, but when it happens and you have to really know how to address it really quickly and probably pray specifically for that, which is what I had to do at that very moment when it happened. I said, okay, boys and girls, can we just stop and have a prayer for this one? And then I asked, I told the child, I'll talk to you after the class, but then I redirected it. You cannot stop it sometimes, but it does happen, sadly. Right. Right. And since you're asking for prayer, I think God covers a lot of things too. God will cover some of the things that, because they're, they're talking from their heart. They're not talking to try to spread something. They're talking for it because of a, a concern. And so for us as leaders, we have to see if that's wise. Maybe we need to pick, uh, people that we know are trying to think of how we would do that. You could either ask uh, one of your helpers to pray at that particular time to keep something like that from happening. If it has happened more in your own private group, then you would know how to handle that. But if it hasn't happened before, then, then there's nothing you can do 
but ask the Lord to cover it and to pray for that person. Uh, somebody else wanted to say something? I see another comment. Can you pronounce her name? Simi, uh, does you want to have a comment? Yes. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize I was unmuted. No. Oh, okay. All right. Anybody else have a comment? Well, I hope some of the things uh, I want to take the time and show you some of the um, prayer journals. She was talking about a prayer journal. I look for certain ones in different ways and different age group. And sometimes I give them as gifts. I really fell in love with this one. I thought it was really nice, um, especially with the front. I think a child would appreciate something like this. I'm hoping that you can see some of these things that I'm going to share. And um, I, I have a question. My question is different. Well, I, I learned so much from, from you guys from last, uh, last night to today, this morning, and now uh, I'm overwhelmed because I, I learned so much. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm charged up, ready to go. But um, my problem with, I have one, one challenge with my class is when they put the children last. When they put the children last, um, it's like even uh, my challenge, one, one, one Saturday morning I was doing the class and that happens so often that that's when the adults are coming in the room, that's when the, the adults that's supposed to be leaders I come in even through prayers while we're praying with the children. That's when they enter in. That's when they want to talk, pull with their kids, pull out their kids or talk with the uh, people in charge. How to, how, without offending anybody, without making, you know, how, how do we fix these situations? One of the things uh, I would suggest is I used to have someone at the door because they would come at a certain time and we wouldn't have the parents to come in. We would bring the child to the parent. So that way, if a parent had to leave early or something, my helper would go and do it so it wouldn't be disruptive. And then if we were praying and they wanted to come in, I would have someone at the door saying, and give me two minutes, five minutes or something. And so they, they, they wouldn't disrupt because it sounds like they're able to just walk through so that means that I need to have somebody at the door or in place to be able to tell them or have the pastor announce our kids will be ready at, at a certain time. Parents, we will bring them to you at the door or meet you at a certain place in the hall. And that way it's not disrupting. So you have to plan for things that's happening and it won't upset you are the children, are the parents. So that sounds like something you can work out in a planning session with your, with your team. If somebody else might wanna comment on that. I'm hoping that that kind of helped you answer your question. Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. the, the parents mean well, but sometimes they don't realize they don't like to be interrupted. If they were in the middle of Sabbath school, they would want their kids to come and walk in and grab them. And they're not thinking. I just put it off that they're not thinking. So I want to help them in a kind way to realize that our children are precious we want to give them back to them, but we want to give it back to them in a fashionable, good way or in a timely manner. And I think the parents will work with you. Or you can have a little note saying, uh, please come and pick up your child at, at since it's a time. And that way it's better. And it's easy if they have an emergency for one of your team leaders to go get that child. 
rather than have them to walk in because that to them disturbs the whole class when they see a parent coming. They wonder, where's my parent? So uh, anybody have anything else on prayer? I was, I was showing you some of the books that I have. Um, I have one, my first prayer book. I with the younger children about your uh, kindergarten and beginners. This would be a nice little something, probably for your kindergarten and juniors to go through at a specific time or uh, give gifts to the family. Somehow or another, if there's a way that you can give something to a family or especially when their child has a, a, ch a baby blessing, that's a wonderful time to give nice little gifts to the family. I love this one, Prayer Promises for Kids. As you can see, I have it marked up. I have little things all in the book, certain prayers that we went over. And especially there was a young man in my previous class, he was talking about things that he did at prayer meeting. This book is awesome. And it tells uh, more than a hundred prayer promises and uh, claims and beliefs. So these are nice to be able to introduce and to work on. And it, so I think it opens up the door for the children to learn that there's so many unique ways about prayer. Prayer is never dull and never outdated. Uh, I think that they will enjoy some of the things. Here's a 31 day of prayer for children. Can you imagine reading this um, each month for 30 days? And I would do this for a couple of months because the time you get to the end, they would have gotten the beginning of the story. So, but it will, every time they hear it, time they read a story in here, it will make a, a lasting impression upon their heart. Um, I read my children for worship of the uh, great controversy for children. I uh, would read that to them when they were coming up and they really, really enjoyed that. And it taught them about uh, the great controversy, but in a childlike way. And so we would pick some books and by the time they got to certain ages, we were reading certain books and it helped them to learn to pray. And one of the things, um, I had one of my daughters, she, she went out to play. We would always have worship in the morning. And one morning she got upset because we had worship um, and she wanted to go out and play. And when she went out, her little friend, they were investigated and they found this gun. And they didn't know if it was real or not. And the little girl picks it up and she pointed it towards my daughter, my baby daughter. And um, my daughter took off running and she could hear the bullet go past her ears. But the thing that my daughter said was, mom, if we had not had worship, if we had not had prayer, I could have not have been here. That was a terrible experience. But I had taught her at an early age that God is with her and she must put God first. So that was a terrible experience. It was probably a terrible example, but I believe in prayer and I believe in worship. Those things are very dear to me. So I'm hoping that just remembering the different ways and working with children can be fun. There are so many fun ways to get them to learn to pray and talk to God. Um, we have another interesting thing. This is called, um, this is like a label. It's a eraser. There was a whole bunch of erasers I found on sale once. And each eraser had a color to it. Oh, I had it open upside down. And 
each each color was in a type prayer, and um, they would all take turns and have their colors. And it's, it's different things that you can find. God will work with you and help you to be able to find different things you can use for prayer. I hope you can see, can you see these? Are you able to see them? Yes. Okay. And these are erasers and they're building blocks. And I show them how God takes one part of our lives and he adds to another and help us to grow. He uses different things in life to help us to be where he wants to be. We can be nothing without him. And we need not try to go with, uh, take a test or go anywhere without first asking him to come along with us. So, and then also to take the time to hear him. I love this one. Have you ever seen a prayer rock? This one I use when they were small and they would put it on their head. They would put it on their pillow. And when they put it on the pillow, that reminds them to talk to God before they go to sleep. There's so many different things that you can use to help them to think about prayer and to think about God. Judy, did you want to say something, Judy? Uh, yes, just wanted to add, and thank you so much for your presentation. I really love it. Um, sometimes when we've been in the church for too long, which I had been, we take some things for granted. And I think God gave me my youngest child to question <laughs> and to challenge me because <laughs> of all my children, she's eight. She started questioning me and challenging me on things that I had taken so much for granted. For example, I would say, oh, we're listening to God's voice. And she'd be like, how? I didn't hear anything. How does God talk to me? So she said, I didn't hear anything, mommy. What, what do you mean God is speaking? I can't hear anything. So I have to, there are some kids you have who won't just take it, you know, the words like that. And then I remember mm -hmm. one time we were praying, I'm like, oh God, we are so thankful Jesus died on the cross. And she's like, why is it a good thing when somebody dies? Because on the other end, we are saying you cannot kill because it's a sin. But here we are celebrating that somebody died. You see, at a young age, sometimes they take things literally. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to explain why is it that in this particular case, when somebody dies, it's a good thing. Or how is it that God speaks to us? And another thing that she challenged me about was how come I didn't get the answer that I wanted? Because she was praying for something and it didn't happen. She said, but mommy, we prayed and grandpa still died. How come? You mean God didn't hear our prayer? So we have to train the kids from a young age to know that God answers things according to how what's good for us and he knows what's best for us, which is a very a challenge. So I'm just saying that sometimes it's not just black and white and easy like that. You can have right. moments that challenge you and you have to go an extra mile explaining the prayers to the kid and not assuming that if you say, oh, God is talking to you, they'll just know, oh, God is talking to me. How? How does he talk to me? Right, right. I love that, Judy. I thank you so much. I love that. Um, you will have our six kids, you will have one or two that will challenge you. <laughs> so I understand what you're saying about that. Um, is there anybody else that wants to share? I was trying to take time to show you some of the things that we had. I'm hoping that some of the ideas, um, I love this one, food for thought. When we get ready to get down and eat, there's a recipe for life. There's a basic, okay. There's different things that you can learn through the cards and asking questions. Um, and it has scriptures on the back. As the bread is the staff of life, the simple sentence of the body. So appreciate it appreciation is the food of the soul. 
So it's things here that you can learn when you're sitting at the table to read different things or to save different verses or to be thankful for. So the main thing is to keep ever before our children that God is listening. He's leaning on us to talk to him. And there's so many ways. They're not just one way. One of the things that we taught in our prayer summit was the positions of prayer. We forget that. You don't always have to kneel. Sometimes you can lay prostrate. Sometimes you can stand. Sometimes it's good to stand. And then sometimes it's good to kneel. Those things are important. Also, let them know that it's nice to have different uh, an altar and maybe one room or place. That's good for them to go to when they see that altar. They know it's time to pray. Or you could have a certain room, a prayer room, where they can go in and write their prayer requests. No questions asked. But everybody is praying for that one thing going to that particular room. There are so many ways that we can present prayer to our children. And I hope we'll take the time and the opportunity to them and forget your neighbors um, and the community. Um, as your churches, you could also have blessings for uh, the, the kids in the neighborhood. That's a good way to introduce new kids to prayer. Um, we always have to think about witnessing for others as well as taking care of our, our kids at home. It's open so many blessings for us and we can share them. And I hope showing you some of the materials that we have, this is only a small collection of stuff I have because like I said, we had a prayer summit once. We had it for two years in a row. And there's so many different things that we use and the kids enjoy themselves. We had them from nine o'clock until about three o'clock in the evening. And the parents love being there as well. I thought the parents would be dropping off the kids, but the parents stayed to find out what could they do about prayer all this long? And so there's so many witnessing tools because there's so many kids that don't know how to pray. We take it for granted that prayer is something we all say, not so. It's not every home. So let's not take for granted these things and try to help others to learn we have a loving Jesus that's waiting at the door for us to knock so he can come in. If there's nothing else, if somebody want to ask me some questions or want to comment, I appreciate everyone that has spoken and made a comment. We probably have some more that I did not see. I want to say like thank you so much, Carolyn, for right, ladies, your presentation. We do have a couple minutes left if anybody has any more questions. And then we have a 10 minute break before our next workshop. So I am definitely very new to this. What does a bubble prayer look like? Okay. Three kids. Okay. Um, one, I have a, a bottle with bubbles in it. That's a bubble prayer. Or we can have, um, you can draw something similar to like I did with the popcorn and hand out to kids. And everybody uh, would have one, or you can take a balloon and put um, have air in it. And then at certain times when it goes up, they can pray. So bubble prayers can be something that you can draw. Like this could be a cloud. This can be, uh, if it's a round shape, it could be a bubble, or you could actually use people. My smaller kids, they like it better than my kids because the 
smaller kids to be able to say a prayer instantly and not say a home prayer. They were able to talk to God in a sentence or word. Awesome. Thank you for that question. And thank you, Ms. Carolyn. So we will officially uh, take a break for 10 minutes, I would advise, and I will take my own advice to probably go run around <laughs> outside for a little bit and uh, get some fresh air. And uh, we'll see you back here at 450 for workshop number seven. Our workshop and today thank you will, so be much. End, uh, will be end at what time today? At 10, like last night, or what time we end in today? Well, our general session, our last general session is from six to seven, and then the ministry booths will be open until eight. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Karen. Thank you so much, Rachel, for being here and was on line with us. Um,